Okay, so first things first, we're going to make a quick copper ring, which we used as a former in the mould that we pour the electrum into. If you want more information on doing this sort of thing, the link in the description to making a silver ring is the same process. Okay, so here's the casting setup. This is it's not Delft clay, it's a non-branded version, but it works just as well. It's a mixture of clay and a fine sand and oil. And we break up all the bits and pieces, and then we start to load the casting rings. Make sure and press it down nice and firmly. That way you get a good even cast. So this is the bottom half of the mould. I'm just going to dust it with talcum powder. Stops the top half sticking to it. And then push the ring in and undo a whole load of stuff out of frame. So it's really badly filmed on my part. Don't worry, you're going to come back to this later. Fill it all up. And there you can see little bits of the uh, the ends of toothpicks, which are really good for making air channels. Because if you don't make air channels, the metal can't flow properly around the mould. And you won't get a proper cast. So I'm just going to push the toothpick through make some channels up to the top and cut a bigger channel down to the actual bit of the mould itself and that's where we'll pour the mould and metal in. And I like to go over these with a burnishing tool or a rounded off screwdriver in this case to make sure everything's nice and smooth and then I give it another quick dust with talcum powder, put it back together and we're ready to go clean high sided tray to pour into just in case there are any splashes uh, that will catch them and um, make it easy to clean up. This is the electrum that I've used before so it's sort of failed castings and leftover bits and pieces. Get it good and hot and Here we go. Now to see if it's worked. It has not worked. So I'll take out the burned bits of sand. They will be thrown away. They're no use. They won't stick together once they've been charred. Still a bit hot at this point, but and that will go in the bin. And here we go again, reloading them all. Slightly better angle this time, although only slightly better. So you can see, you just push the former in about halfway. It doesn't matter if you're a bit out. And you can cut these air channels afterwards, but I find it's a lot easier and more reliable to just use. So these are just cut off ends of toothpicks, slightly blunted on the end so they're not too pointy. It's important to make sure the inside of the mould is clean, brush out any stray bits of sand or talcum powder, make sure all the channels are good and open. OK, 
Again, I'm aware I'm doing this mostly out of frame. I will get this right one of these days. So there we go, those go back into the box. And we're ready to cast again. Melt everything down. Make sure it's nice and hot this time. And in it goes. Now that's more like it. You don't need to quench it in water, but it's fun. So we're going to cut off all the sprues. They can go back in the box to be recast. And start grinding away all the excess. Sand casting isn't as clean as investment casting with last wax. But it's you need a lot less stuff. So I've just cleaned up the inside and make sure the ring is, is good size wise. Because obviously you can't you can't really size them down once they've been cast. You just have to recast them. You can stretch them up a bit if they're a little bit undersized. But the first thing I check is size and then it's on to getting the geometry right. That's just a, um, a hex socket with some masking tape on to provide a, a friction fit for the ring. So I'm just sanding down the outsides. Occasionally you get little bubbles and inclusions from the casting process and they need to be polished out. That can happen more often if you heat too much. If you don't heat enough, the cast will fail because the metal won't make it all the way around the mould. If you heat too much you get lots of bubbles in the final cast and that's equally as useless. So working through the grits to get this all nice and clean. And sometimes you can't see the little bits until you're up to the high grits and then you have to go back down again. And But this is looking pretty good at this point. So on to working on the inside. This is 600 grit paper with some double sided tape on the back around another slightly smaller hex socket and then I can reach the inside of the ring. It's a bit scrapey on your fingers but you get used to it. And 1200 grit paper And now on to liquid polish. This is just Autosol. You can buy this in any uh, DIY or car parts place. Make sure that the inside face and the edges get a good polish as well as the outside. I love this bit where it looks really dark, it looks really awful and then all of a sudden shiny. The old cell is a bit messy. It, it gives quite a good finish but once you've finished here then I like to clean it with acetone to make sure all of the remainder of the polish is off. I, gloves are for keeping my mucky hands off the nice shiny jewellery. I know it's bad form with spinning tools, but they are very thin latex and will tear away if they get caught. So just doing the insides and checking the outside faces for extra polish. Next stage is uh, these 3M flappy discs that you can almost see. Uh, these are a tenth of a micron and these give just a tiny bit higher polish. They also polish off any of the leftover autosol that I didn't clean off with the acetone. So I give it a couple of rounds with these. 
and finally on to a quite dirty cloth wheel with a touch of jeweler's rouge just for that final bit of gloss and there we go one electron ring ready to go be someone's wedding ring and can see its partner as well.